good morning chess friends i am back again with my fifth video on mura series ongoing mura series that i am covering and in this part i am going to have a look at a very old game played in smith mura gambit with uh, slightly unusual ideas compared to modern day theory of placing queen and rooks in a certain fashion but uh, this game is very interesting and this is a very old game actually played in 1867 so like in modern day theory of mura it is recommended to place your queen on uh, usually on e2 square and your rooks on c and d files usually open and semi open files so c file is open because uh, white sacrifices a pawn to achieve some fast development and open c file and in this game that idea is not used but uh, this game is very old and uh, this game is so old that even uh, this opening was no not known as the smith mora gambit that that time of the game because uh, much later this name formally was given to this opening so in this uh, game uh, much uh, different ideas are used but uh, it is still very interesting game and so let's have a look at this game it was played in 1867 in dundee scotland during the famous uh, dundee chess congress and in the f uh, this game was published uh, as a form of uh, collection of games uh, in the transaction british chess association for year 1866 and 1867 by j lillian thal and j w madley and the congress took place in 1867 september and it is uh, in some sense has some uh, important historical uh, significance as uh, for the first time in the history of the game one half point was awarded for the draws and this is really revolutionary as before that uh, there was no points given for the draws so in that sense uh, this tournament is uh, uh, you can say a landmark in the history of chess and this uh, in the grand tournament there were very uh, uh, few games uh, played in this tournament but there were different uh, kind of uh, events during this tournament and in the grand tournament uh, there were 10 par participants most they were from britain i think from great britain uh, 10 players in this event included blackburn devere then gb fraser and dr jc fraser and sml g mcdonald famous newman who actually won this tournament and colonel lobbins and w spence and first official world chess champion william steinitz also played in this tournament and newman uh, won this uh, tournament with 7 and a half point ahead of uh, other british players so there is also free book available yeah, on google about the games in this uh, tournament and it was probably by a uh, same book as uh, lillian thal described and maybe game notations are in older format but uh, there is a link below this video if you are really interested in the book uh, you can download it uh, from google ebooks because it is uh, free probably in public domain so our game was played between joseph and de blackburn with white pieces uh, as we all know he was uh, the outlaw of the chess world during his time and with black pieces cecily valentine de vere a uh, scotman scottish player who was playing the black side and 
Black Bun, as we all know, probably was the most attacking chess player of his time from England, and you can compare him with uh, Mikhail Tal in modern times. While Cecil Valentine de Vera is sometimes referred as the English Morphy because of his uh, natural talent for the game, and he died very young at the age of just 29, a few years after this game was played, and. Surprisingly, he also was the winner of the first official British Chess Championship in 1866. So, probably at the time of this game, he already was the first British Chess Champion. And this game is really very interesting. So, let's have a look at this game. Blackburn playing white, Devere black. So, Blackburn in his uh, typical style preferred open games for attack with white pieces so he played e4 c5 was the reply of Tivere Sicil Valentine so we are entering into the Sicilian defense d4 was played offering a pawn and here knight uh, f3 was played instead of the c3 regular Sicilian move because uh, sorry regular smith mora gambit move and usually c3 is played before knight f3 in most variations as uh, it is easy that way to develop white's queen side knight very easily and before but uh, modern chess engines have proved that playing c3 is not as bad as most of the people think if you play perfectly you at least can achieve a draw with uh, someone who is about your strength but knight f3 is also known as morphic gambit was played in this game and it is part of you can say modern smith mora gambit theory this uh, morphic gambit but Morphe Gambit was played and Stockfish here suggested Knight F3 as good move until the depth of 20 half moves but at the later and much greater depth it prefers E6 or E5 better compared to Knight F3 I think E5 is slightly dubious but E6 is still better because uh, you have then you as a black you have many different possibilities to go into different Sicilian formats Sicilian setup so e6 is better in this position but uh, what was played in the game was e5 bishop c4 here most of the more modern theory suggests c3 and chess engines also agree with this thing Stockfish agrees that c3 is better than bishop c4 but bishop c4 was, uh, was played in the game so let's have a look at the c3 line after c3 a sample line goes like this and this uh, you can say is good for black also as uh, there are no development trouble anymore and though black queen side pieces are still a bit tangled but uh, as the sample line suggests now black is uh, almost equal and white's uh, knight on a3 is slightly displayed displaced but uh, this was not played during the game after e5 what was played was bishop c4 knight c6 was played during the game stock we suggested queen c7 and queen c7 if uh, c5 is still closed is slightly better compared to knight c6 but uh, queen c7 was not played you can play you que your queen to c7 square if uh, c5 is still closed but here in this position it is better just to play either knight c6 or queen c7 both are almost equal but computer still slightly 
pre first queen c7 over knight c6 but knight c6 was played in the game white castle here also there is another good move uh, before castling straight forward going into the mora line with c3 but castling was played let's have a look at the c3 possibility and a sample and goes like this and here if you play center game or fried liver attack uh, you are very familiar with the ideas uh, why this uh, c3 was played and why it is important to block uh, d5 square so this way black can prevent direct attack on h7 square but this was not played in the game in the game in this position castle was played and now what was played in the game is slightly dubious h6 was played and this h6 was played just to prevent knight from jumping to g5 square and then attacking h7 and along with this bishop it can really be dangerous and considering blackburn style it is very dangerous because blackburn is a very attacking player and he may sacrifice a piece or two just to get a very comfortable position and quick attack so this move maybe was designed just to prevent knight g5 but uh, this is not a good move bishop c5 is still better and here knight g5 is also possible even after that but after g5 knight h6 uh, this is good for black as uh, there is no direct way to exploit uh, weakness of h7 square another line is here in this position c3 is also possible and here this uh, after if black captures on c3 then we enter the main line of mura gambit apart from that uh, there is another line suggested by uh, stockfish uh, uh, in bishop c5 line after bishop c5 knight g5 is played knight h6 queen h5 and queen f6 instead of castling and here black is uh, still very equal without much trouble white still has some initiative and attack but uh, sample line goes like this and uh, this still is uh, okay for both white and black but what was played in the game was h6 and after h6 c3 was finally played on the sixth move instead of third move as we usually see in the mora gambit so black now is really way behind in development apart from knight nothing is developed and if he uh, captures on c3 then he may get way behind in development so he tried to develop bishop c5 was played and this really is uh, an ugly move probably a blunder but uh, what he can do there is another line suggested by stockfish uh, after d takes c3 instead of bishop c5 attacking h7 square moving queen to d5 this you can do before uh, regularly capturing on c3 square so knight takes c3 knight f6 queen moves back a6 bishop e3 and here still white is much better than black uh, now both king side and king side uh, queen side and king side of black is tangled so this still is uh, slightly better than what was played in the game bishop c5 but bishop c5 is very human move because in this position you can see black is way behind in development and in panic maybe he tried to develop and this move is really wrong, uh, wrong as he may have overlooked this simple 
B4 idea and after B4 we sub back to B6 C takes D4 here another move another possible move is bishop b2 but what was played in the game was also okay c takes d4 e takes d4 knight f6 is a possibility here simple line goes like this but still here white is much much better look at white bishops they are both attacking critical squares on black king side so this still is better but what was played in the game was he takes d4 knight takes d4 here bishop b2 is still good but much similar ideas as compared to the game so we are not going to have a deep look here but uh, knight takes d4 is also a bad move and it may have uh, given a chance to black to equalize so bishop b2 was still better though both lines are probably equal i don't know as uh, it is more intuitive to directly capture on d4 but chess engine suggests it otherwise so let's have a look at this line This is a simple line suggested by Stockfish, and this position is actually very computer-like. So it is really very difficult to calculate all this. So what was played in the game was knight takes d4 in this position, and knight takes d4 was played in the game. And this probably is a mistake as uh, you can see bishop e5 and black really equalizes very easily because there are two moves bishop e3 and bishop b2 and after queen b6 both these moves are neutralized and black black can achieve equality and there is another line suggested by stockfish after 9 bishop e5 instead of capturing on b4 by black with his knight so a sample line goes like this and this probably is a very forcing line so This position is actually very uncomfortable for black to play. And again this is a very computer like move so it is very difficult to find this kind of moves over the board and this kind of positions calculating really deep. So what was played in the game was simple knight takes d4 and after this. Uh, black lost and great opportunity to equalize uh, in the game queen takes d4 was played and queen e7 was played in the game and that really is slightly inaccurate move here black have missed the chance uh, to capture one pawn and maybe not to equalize but uh, improve his position slightly with bishop takes b4 and after this black i think is uh, still worse but uh, it, this is still better than what was played in the game in the claim game queen e7 was played after it bishop b2 and rook h7 was played and this move is really bad and this is actually very ugly looking move also to move your rook to a square like h7 and rook h7 was played in the game this is really very funny looking also instead there were other moves also 
once suggested by Stockfish at very great depth was f6, but this is very unhuman like move, very difficult to calculate uh, with this kind of pawn structure uh, and even very difficult to play this kind of positions if you are not just brutally calculating everything but this line is also okay for black this was the best line suggested by stockfish here white is still much much better than black but uh, it is not straightforward losing and what was played in the game was uh, rook h7 in this position knight f6 is also possi possible but after e5 bishop takes e5 queen takes e5 this po position is uh, much much better for white compared compared to a previous line that we checked so that is out of question this f7 was played then here straightforward e5 is good enough to win white already has winning advantage here and both bishops are in very good position to attack on on the king side of black all critical squares are covered by black bishop uh, sorry white bishops and there is no need to make a waiting move like a3 uh, you can start attacking with uh, move like e5 and this line was suggested by stockfish and here white still is uh, better but a3 was played instead of e5 during the game in this position a3 was played after that with sub c7 was played knight c3 queen e5 all these moves are probably best and forced in the current scenario current position of the game so after rook a2 d1 there were uh, some better moves but knowing that this is uh, winning already a winning position black one may have tried to just equalize uh, neutralize black threats and exchange some material to f keep black king in the center and exchange as many pieces as possible as he already has a winning position so he chose some suboptimal moves but they were good enough to win and here g5 was played what else black can do as black pieces on queen side are all tangled there is no easy way to develop them without losing lot of material so here knight a4 was played bishop moving back to a a1 a waiting move that is also possible but bishop simply was exchanged and knight e7 bishop b3 knight g6 knight c4 knight f4 all these moves are quite good and after this e5 was finally played here black has a possibility to make rook h8 move that was not played during the game and here black still is losing but it is slightly better than what was played in the game so after knight takes d3 that was played in the game knight checks on b6 square black king goes to e7 rook takes d3 b5 rook c1 rook h8 finally was played bishop a6 was better but rook h8 was played 
look at three b8 here rook uh, f8 was suggested by stockfish and uh, this really is far far better than what was played in the game that is rook b8 so let's have a look at this rook f8 line first after rook f8 sample line goes like this and though it seems uh, like is no better than the what was played in the game but still uh, this line is much better as I have checked it really deeply with uh, stockfish but what was played in the game was rook b8 in this position rook b8 was played and after that rook takes f7 check king to e6 rook to c5 bishop to b7 and this was the final blunder of the game as uh, here you cannot take uh, bishop with your knight because your rook on f7 is hanging and this still is a slightly better position but uh, for white but uh, this position certainly is not winning and maybe this was the last try try by black just to see if uh, white falls for something like that but what was played in the game was rook f6 check king moves out of the check and final move was played rook takes b5 and here in this position playing with black pieces uh, Sicily Val Valentine de Vare finally resigned in view of following variation and this is the best variation suggested by a stockfish so this already is over for black <laughs> simply looking at the board you can say that this is over so there is no need to calculate any further so uh, this game is really different from from most of the mora gambit games that are played today but uh, this is a sideline of a mora gambit you can say this morphy gambit and it is really useful for useful for those players who want to play sicilian alpine if uh, somebody declines mora gambit so if you move your knight to f3 before making any c3 pawn move you can go into this uh, alpine sicilian also so if you want to check this you can then uh, you can do some google quick google search on morphy gambit if you want to check few games on this line morphy gambit in smith mora so that's all for today bye for now